put your lunch away because things are going to get a little nasty around here. We're going to talk about something called dog vomit slime mold on today's episode of Coffee and Compost. Can't believe I'm even talking about this. My name is Steve Churchill and this is the Urban Worm Company. I saw a Facebook post the other day from a new vermicomposter who was alarmed at the disgusting yellow growth that she found inside her urban worm bag. It was all on the top of her vermicompost. It was crawling up the sidewalls as well. She was certain she did something wrong, but it's more likely she did something right. The scientific name for what she saw is Fuligoseptica, and that sounds gross enough, but we couldn't leave well enough alone, so we gave it the name of dog vomit slime mold. So now that we know what it's called, what is it, and how did she get this hellishness into her bin? Well, you might think it's a fungi, the slime mold is a protist and more closely related to amoeba. It likes warm, wet conditions high in organic matter which sounds a lot like the conditions in a worm bin. Specifically, it likes woody waste like mulch. So if you've got a moist worm bin with lots of that woody material, don't be surprised to find it from time to time. As the name suggests, it looks like, well, yellow dog barf or really runny scrambled eggs. And if worms and worm poop weren't gross enough for you, seeing something as disgusting as this mold might make you give up vermicomposting forever. But here's the good news. Dog vomit slime mold is a saprophyte, meaning it helps to decompose organic matter and turn complex matter into simple substances that plants can use. If this function sounds similar, it's because it's pretty much like worms and the other microbes like bacteria and fungi that you'd want to find in a worm bin. It's not harmful to worms and the castings from a bin that's got this stuff in it will not harm plants. And unless you have a specific allergy to it, it won't bug you either, except for how heinous it looks. Now guys, most of my videos aren't this gross, so if you want to see other vermicomposting content, hit subscribe and click that little bell to let you know every time we release a new video. Now back to the topic. Lots of us indoor vermicomposters make deals with our spouses and roommates when it comes to our worm bins. We're told, go ahead and have your worms, but don't let me see anything gross. And we say, sure. But if you discover slime mold in your worm bin and you want to do something about it before Rumi tosses your bin out, Outside, here's how I'd attack it. I would manually remove any of the stuff that you could find, and I'd leave the top of the worm bin open and let it air out for a few days. And I'd find a carbon material other than mulch or woody waste to put in your bin. Now, I normally love wood chips and woody waste that can provide bulk and aeration in your vermicompost, but in this case, you can lessen your chances of getting this slime mold if you don't use that stuff. Dog vomit slime mold can show up literally overnight in your worm bin, on your worm bin, and even around your worm bin. It can appear on your vermicompost and even on on plastic surfaces near that organic matter. And as quickly as it appears, it can disappear very quickly too. Now guys, getting this slime mold is probably not indicative of any real mistakes you made. It's just one of the critters that show up when you create an environment rich in moisture and organic waste. But there are some very common mistakes that you can make with a worm farm. So I created a simple, easy to read guide called Rookie Vermicomposting Mistakes That Everyone Makes. If you click the little link above my left shoulder, you can sign up to get that guide immediately. I've gotten great feedback on PDF resources like this, so if you have haven't gotten your copy it's worth signing up and getting it now all right gang that's it we're gonna see you on the next video which i think is gonna be a little less gross see ya